It's a little more complicated, we're going to illustrate this on a chart, that the 35% credit to qualifying CCPCs is on both current and capital expenditures. However, on current expenditures, which is your wages, contractors, and overhead, that credit is fully refundable. So if I get $100,000 of credits, I get the full $100,000 as cash back to the extent I don't owe tax. The credit on capital equipment is still at 35%, but it's only 40% refundable. So in that case, if I got $100,000 worth of credits on capital equipment, but I didn't owe any tax, I would only get $40,000 of that as a refund. The other $60,000 I would have to carry forward up to 20 years, or I could carry back three years against taxes that I might have paid if I was profitable in the prior three years. Okay? So is the issue of the percentage rate of the credits and the refundability of the credits as well. <coughs> an excluded corporation. Has anyone heard of an excluded corporation? You probably won't ever see one. Uh, it's listed in the legislation. Excluded corporation is a for-profit corporation that's controlled by a non-for-profit corporation, if you can figure that out. So if those occur, and they do occur, they're often hospital research associations and stuff that Develop, that often start as nonprofits and develop some new drug or chemical and become profit oriented because they, they start commercializing stuff. So if you deal with those, there's a whole different set of rules and some really neat cases that talk about strategies for it. If you're a CCPC that's one of those large companies that we talked about, that you're over certain income and size tests that we're talking about, you could still get a 20% credit, but it tends to be non-refundable or partially refundable as we're going to look at in the next few slides. So as I mentioned, there's generally a limit of $3 million a year that's prorated amongst all companies under common control. The government calls that associated corporations is the definition of the Income Tax Act. And if you understand what that means and why it's there, it's pretty easy to follow. There's a schedule of your tax return when you do a corporate tax return called Schedule 49. And if your accountant's done it properly, it has to list all companies that you control or that are under common control. So if you control this company and two or three other ones, you have to list them all there. And whether you do SR&ED or not, you have to do it because there's general rules that say that the first four to $500,000 that you earn in active business income each year is taxed at a low rate, roughly 18%. And as soon as you go over that limit, the tax rate jumps up to around 34, 35%. So the tax rate doubles. Now, without the rules on association, if I had a profitable company and I'm making, say, a million dollars, I would hire a sharp account like Ed and say, Ed, I don't want to pay a high 35% rate of tax, so when this company goes over 400000 I'll just open another one. And I'll put money through there, and then I'll open another one, and another one, and, another, and I'll keep them all, and I'll, you know, how much are you going to charge me a year to do a tax return versus the $60,000 in tax I'm going to save each year in perpetuity? It's going to make a lot of sense to open more and more corporations. But the government's wise to that. They're saying, <laughs> You're not the first guy who thought of that. <laughs> uh, if, we, if we allowed that, sure, we'd lose a lot of tax. But what we have is this rule that says, you, you can be like Donald Trump. You can own 130 companies. There's no rule. Own as many companies as you want. But you have a legal obligation to file tax returns. And when you do, Schedule 49 has to list all the companies that you control. Now, what does control mean in that? We, we could do a whole course on what it is or isn't. It tends to be a, a really interesting issue. But basically, any companies that arguably I control directly with voting control or indirectly, what they call de facto control, I have enough influence, even though I don't have all the votes necessary, I have to share those limits. <coughs> and when we add up the prior taxable incomes and what they call taxable capital, which is basically the assets on the company's balance sheet that are employed in Canada, not foreign assets, just the Canadian assets of all those companies together, they have to stay under certain levels. So there's a complicated formula here in the Income Tax Act for those accountants who want to go through it. But basically the way it works out for years up to 2010, and we'll show you in the last budget that this has increased a little bit, is up to 2003 there was a $2 million limit, sorry, up to 2006 there was a $2 million limit that got phased out as your prior year taxable income exceeded certain levels. Right now there's a $3 million limit, so the first $3 million amongst all associated companies get this enhanced 35% refundable credit. As my prior year's taxable income goes over 400,000, for every dollar of taxable income of the group over 400,000, I lose $10 off that limit. So at 500,000, I only have a $2 million limit. 
At 600,000, I only have a million. So again, what your accountant's gonna do is help you at the end of the year, because you can bonus out excess income. We can bonus it to the owner manager, they can pay personal tax on it, and it's a deduction of the company. So you can keep income under whatever levels that you want. Okay? There's issues on reasonableness and stuff, but if you follow certain rules, it's easy to do. <clears throat> so in many cases, if I have a company that's only spending half a million dollars a year, they don't need their full $3 million limit. It means we can take the group income up to, say, 650000 in the prior taxation year before we start really having any negative effects. So I don't always recommend to the client that we bonus out, but I'll say how much do you expect to spend next year and make sure that they're aware uh, of certain income levels and whether they want a bonus at the end of the year to enhance their credits for the following year. <laughs> Same thing on taxable capital, which is roughly equal to the assets on the balance sheet. Up until 2008, there used to be a phase out between 10 to 50 million dollars. So as my assets go between 10 and 50 million, again, there's a straight line phase out on my $3 million. <coughs> For Ontario, Ontario says, and Quebec say, we think the federal definition, or thought the federal definition is too low, so Ontario phases you out between 25 to 50 million. Quebec says, we think both of your definitions are too low, they phase you out between 50 to 75 million. So Quebec says, you're a small or medium-sized company until at least 50 million, and 50 to 75 is medium size. Okay? So each province tends to do its own thing. Now more and more, Ontario has harmonized the tax system with the federal government, so you're going to see less and less variances. Quebec will probably be the only province with variances. Historically, uh, there's the chart. Some quick examples, just to illustrate that if we have a 2008 taxation year, we're looking at the prior taxation year's income, and as it goes up, Again, we phase out our expenditure limit. So at different expenditure levels, you'd have, have a different refund amount and a different non-refundable amount. Just applying that formula there. You can do the same for taxable capital. So either income over a certain threshold can knock you out, or assets over a certain threshold will phase out your refundability of the credits. The 2009 budget basically takes those and for 2010 and subsequent years, it just basically bumps the threshold up from the green line, 400,000 to 700,000. Now they start phasing you out at 500,000 to 800,000. So it means you can have up to 500,000 taxable income, net income, of all the corporations before you start having any effects on the following year's ITC rates. Ontario also introduced a 4.5% non-refundable credit and similar income phases, along with additional credits in the last year for Alberta and Quebec. Okay. So we'll talk about Ontario if we're a qualified CCPC. On an expense, we would get a 10% Ontario Innovation Tax Credit, which is fully refundable. We could then opt to claim a 4.5% non-refundable Ontario Research and Development Credit. So there's an the Innovation Credit, 10% refundable. Ontario Research and Development Credit, the new one, which is non-refundable. Now, if we choose, this, if we choose to claim this non-refundable credit, it's deemed as government assistance. So what happens is we spend $100, but then the federal government says, Dave, we realize that the province gave you 14 and a half of those dollars back, so we think you only spent 85.50, net at the end of the day, and we'll give you 35% of that. So here I'm only getting roughly $30 back cash from the feds and $10 back cash from the province. If I have taxes payable, I can apply that extra 4.5% against the taxes payable. But what I might also want to do is if I'm in the last position, I may choose to renounce this credit, okay, at which point I would just have a 10% credit, meaning here I would be much like BC, I would get 31.5 cents back on the dollar. Instead of 29.9, I would end up with a little more cash in my pocket today. So it's up to the client to say, I'd rather have a little more cash today because we have huge loss carry forwards versus a non-refundable credit that it may take me 10 or 15 years to use up. So you want to make an informed decision on that. Pretty much the same for uh, large companies, non-qualified CCPCs, so your foreign public companies, things of that nature. They can still qualify for the 10% Ontario uh, Innovation Tax Credit, which is refundable. So Ontario does not discriminate against public companies or foreign control. 
they just look at the size test, income and capital. So I have some companies that are listed on the TSE that are in lost positions that normally wouldn't bother claiming, but they say, well, you know what, that 10% on Ontario is just enough. We spent a quarter million dollars to warrant us doing a claim for the time and effort involved. And if we ever get these non-refundable federal credits in the future when we get profitable, that's just a bonus. But the cash from Ontario would be enough just for us to warrant it at 10 cents on the dollar to file a claim today. David, yes. Do you know who your previous slide? Do you know about Quebec? Uh, now, Quebec, Quebec's hard to compare directly because Quebec is, has an interesting system in that they only pay on wages. Quebec says, we don't care where materials, capital, who cares? We're here to create, create high-tech employment in Quebec, period. They give a very high credit on any Quebec wages, but they don't pay anything else. Yeah. So comparative figures, if I want Ontario to look better, I just assume more, I assume more of the expenses that Ontario would pay that Quebec wouldn't. If I want Quebec to look better, I'll just skew it more. So I can, I can make these numbers yeah. fall whichever yeah. way I want. Well, again, Quebec, yeah, they do it strictly on wages. So they encourage you in whatever industry, if you've got wages, Quebec wages, um, you're basically getting anywhere from 17.5 to 37.5 cents on the dollar back there. So we talked about the refund that you can carry back three years and carry forward various amounts. For ITCs earned up to 2005, there's a 10-year carry forward, just like losses. Losses that you incur up to 2005, carry forward up to 10 years. Losses after that, the budget changed in that year. Any losses after 2005 now carry forward, just like ITC's 20 years. So when losses expire, looks at a schedule, schedule four, and it'll tell you when the losses start to expire. It really depends when you first incurred them and the clock starts ticking. Okay, we're gonna talk about qualified expenditures with an example. One of the things that it doesn't include is something called prescribed expenditures when we get to section N. And we're going to talk about the rest of these in various other slides. 